Hello, my dear friends. We are back with day nine's MCQs. In previous videos, we have discussed a lot about English literature's first year question answers, and we have discussed why that particular is the correct answer. In highlighters, we have explained more about the answer itself. So I guess you all have benefited a lot from our videos. I wish. Upcoming videos are also going to be fruitful for you all. So let's begin today's class. Question number one. Hamlet, lying wounded, says to his friend, Horatio, I am dead. This is an example of option A, Protasis, option B, Anacrusis, option C, Prolepsis. And option D, pun. Here, option C, prolepsis, is the correct answer. Let's see the highlighters. Procatalysis, also called prolepsis or prebutal, is a figure of a speech in which the speaker raises an object to their own argument and then immediately answer it. The anticipation and answering of possible objection in rhetorical speech. Question number two. The castle of Otranto is an example of option A, gothic novel, option B, romance, option C, comic fiction, option D, Bildux Roman or development novel. A. Here, option A is the correct answer. Let's move ahead. Gothic fiction, which is largely known by the subgenre of Gothic horror, is a genre or mode of literature and film that combines fiction and horror, death and at times romance. Its origin is attributed to English author Horace Walpole with his 1764 novel, The Castle of Otranto, subtitled in its second edition, A Gothic Story. Gothic fiction tends to place emphasis on both emotion and a pleasure and a pleasurable kind of treasure, terror, terror, serving as an extension of the romantic literature literary movement that was related, relatively new at the time that Walpole's novel was published. Question number three. The City of Dreadful Night, a long poem, depicted the late Victorian sense of gloom and despondency is written by option A, Matthew Arnold, option B, Robert Browning, option C, James Thompson, option D, John Davidson. Here, option C, that is James Thompson, is the correct answer. James Thompson is an Scottish poet and playwright. He was born on 11th September 1700 in Ednam, Rocks, Berkshire, Kingdom of Scotland. He died on 27th August 1748 at the age of 48 only. Richmond upon Thames, at Richmond upon Thames, Kingdom of Great Britain. Let's see question number four. Which of the following novels by S. V. S. Nagpal is set in Africa and carries echoes of Joseph Conrad? Option A. The Mystic Monsieur. Option B. A Blend in the River. Option C, a house for Mr. Biswas. Option D, the mimic men. Here, option B, that is a bend in the river, is the correct option. Let's see the highlighters. A bend in the river is a novel by novel laureate V. S. Nagpal. It is published in 1979. Telling the story of Salim. A merchant in post-colonial mid-20th century in Africa 
is one of the Nagpur's best known work and was widely praised. It was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 1979. It is set in African country. Question number five. The character Nathan Zuckerman is associated with the fiction of Option A. Norman Mailer Option B. Saul Bellow Option C. Philip Roth Option D. Bernard Malamud Here, Option C, that is Philip Roth, is the correct answer. Let's see the highlighters. Nathan Zuckerman is a fictional writer created by the writer Philip Roth who uses him as his protagonist and narrator a type of alter ego in many of his novels. First appearance in My Life as a Man in 1974. His first appearance is seen in My Life as a Man in 1974. Last appearance was in Exit Ghost, which was published in the year 2007. Question number seven. Which of the following Tennyson's, Tennyson poems is a dramatic monologue? Option A, In Memoriam. Option B, The Charge of the Light Brigade. Option C, Crossing the Bar. Option D, Tithonus. Here, option D, that is Tithonus, is the correct option. Tithonus is a poem by the Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson. Originally written in 1833 as Titans, Titan, sorry, completed in 1859, it first appeared in February edition of Cornhill magazine in 1860. It is in dramatic monologue. Question number eight: The character Giovanni features. In one of the following texts option a John Clayland's Fanny Hill memoir of a woman of pleasure option B John Ford's tis pity sees a whore option C John brain John brains room at the top option D John Evelyn's diaries here option B that is, John Frauds, the pity she is a whore, is the correct option. So, the tis pity she is a whore is a tragedy written by George Ford. It, first, it was first performed in 1626 or between 1629 and 1633 by Queen Henrietta's men at the Cockpit Theatre. First published in 1633 in a quarto printed by Nicholas Oakes for the bookseller Richard Collins. Ford dedicated the play to John Mordaunt, 1st Earl of Peterborough and Baron of Turvey. Giovanni, son of Florio, his name is pronounced with four syllables. Giovanni. Question number nine. Byron's The Vision of Judgment is a satire directed against Charles Lamb, John Keats, option C, Henry Hallam, and option D, Robert Saudi. Option D, that is Robert Saudi, is the correct option. Here it was satire for Robert Saudi. Robert Saudi, an English poet and poet laureate, from 1813 until his death. He was born on 12th August 1774 in Bristol, the United Kingdom. He died on 21st March 1843 in London, United Kingdom. The Vision of Judgment, which was published in the year 1822, is a satire poem in Ottawa Rima by Lord Byron. It was written in response to the poet laureate Robert Saudis, A Vision of Judgment.
which is published in 1821. Friends, keep in mind, it, Byron's work is The Vision of Judgment and Saudi's work is A Vision of Judgment. Okay, keep in mind. And uh, in the examination, if it is asked, you should not get confused. All right. You can see the publishing date also. One is published in 1822 and another one was published in 1821. So, this because of this slight uh, change, you will mark to the wrong answer. Please keep in mind. Here, from here, you can get two, three questions. Who is the writer? Who is the, uh, what is the date of publish? What is the year of publisher? Etc. Next question. Tom Paine's The Rights of Man was published in 1790, 1791, 1792 and 1793. Here option B, that is 1791 is the correct option. Right of Man, which was published in 1791, is a book by Thomas Paine, including 31 articles. It posits that popular political revolution is permissible when a government does not safeguard the natural rights of its people. Using these points as a base, it defends the French Revolution against Edmund Brooke's attack in reflection on the revolution in France, 1790. It was published in two parts in March 1791 and February 1792. Question number 11. The rhyme of ancient mania, mariner is about a perilous adventure in the sea, the accidental killing of an octopus, the curse of a sea god, the guilt and expiation of the ancient mariner. Well, option D, that is the guilt and expiation of the ancient mariner is the correct answer. The Rhyme of Ancient Mariner is the longest major poem by English poet S.T. Coleridge, written in 1797-98. to It was published in 1798 itself. The first edition of Lyrical Ballads. Lyrical Ballad is a combined work and it has uh, so many poems. It's a collection of poetries by different writers. So here we find his work. Question number 12. Which of the following novels reconstructs the historical events of the Indian mutiny? Let's see the options. Option A, The Jewel in the Crown, The Seas of Krishnapur, The Day of the Scorpion, Option D, The Towers of Silence. Here, option B, The Seas of Krishnapur is the correct option. The Seas of Krishnapur is a novel by J. G. Farrell. This was first published in 1973. The book details the Seas of a Fiction Indian Town, Krishnapur, during the Indian Rebellion in 1857 from the perspective of British residents. Question number 13. England, My England is a poem by W. E. Henley, option B. A. E. Houseman, option C. R. L. Stevenson, option D. Rudyard Kipling. Here option A that is W. E. Henley is the correct answer. Let's see the highlighters for this answer. William Ernest, William Ernest Henley, that is W. E. Henley, an English poet, writer, critic and editor in the late Victorian England, was born on 23rd August 1849 in Gloucester, England. He died on 7, 11th July 1903 at the age of 53. He was working 
and it happened in England. His spouse is Hannah Johnson Boyle. Question number 14. Molly Bloom is a character in James Joyce, a portrait of the artist as a young man. Dubliners, option C, Ulysses, option D, Exiles. Here, option C, Ulysses is the correct answer. Ulysses is a poem in blank verse by the Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson. It is written in 1833. It was published in 1842. It's a, it is in dramatic monologue. Seven lines. Here we find seven lines of blank verse. Question number 15. Seamus Henney was awarded the Nobel Prize for the Literature in the year. 1995, 1996, 1997, and 1998. Here, option A, that is 1995, is the correct answer. Seamus Hilly was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in the year 1995. Question number 16. Verses on the death of Dr. Swift is written by Option A, Alexander Pope. Option B, Samuel Johnson. Option C, John Gay. Option D, Jonathan Swift. Here, option D, that is Jonathan Swift, is the correct answer. Jonathan Swift was an Anglo-Irish satirist, essayist, political pamphleter, poet, and cleric who became dean of St. Patrick's Candle, Dublin, hence his common Sobiquet Dean Swift. Are the important works. He was born on 30th November 1669, 1667, Dublin, Ireland. He died on 19th October 1765 at the age of 77 in Dublin, Ireland. Widower's House was written by Option A. Oscar Wilde Option B. T. S. Eliot Option C. John Galsworthy and Option D. G. B. Shaw Here, Option D, that is G. B. Shaw or George Bernard Shaw is the correct answer. George Bernard Shaw, an Irish playwright, an Irish playwright, critic, polemnist, and political activist was born on 26th July 1856 at Porto Bello, Dublin, Ireland. He died on 2nd November 1950 at Iot St. Lawrence, United Kingdom. Who among the following Marxist critics has reconsidered the classic problem of base and superstructure in relation to literature. Options are Edmund Wilson, Raymond Wilson Wilhelms, Option C Lucian Goldman, Option D Walter Benjamin. Here option B that is Raymond Williams is very correct. Raymond Henry Williams, Wells Marxist Theory Academics Novelist and critic. He was born on 31st, novel, uh, 31st August 1929 at Lanvi Hangel, Krukoni, United Kingdom. He died on 26th January 1988 at Saffron Walden, United Kingdom. His spouse is J. Johnson's. J. Joy Williams, sorry. It is influenced by Karl Marx. Karl Marx, Antonio Gramsci, Louis Arthusser, Bertold Brecht, and Henrik Lebsen. Question number 19. Heteroglossia refers to Option A. The multiple reading of a text. The juxtaposing of multiple voices in a text. 
the comments on the margin of a text, the gloss of the gloss or commentary related to a text. Here, option B, that is the juxtaposition of multi voices, is in a text is correct answer. Heteroglossia, a diversity of voices, styles of discourse, or points of view in a literary work and especially a novel. Heteroglossia is a term used by Mikhail Bakhtin to describe the many voice voicedness of language. The widespread heteroglossia of this society affect of notion of purity and purity of language. Here you will find option B that is the which of x more is correct. Question number 20. Margaret Drabble is the author of Option A, The Memoirs of a Survivor. Option B, The Witch of Exmoor. The Service of Clouds. Option C. And Option D, The Godless in Eden. Here, Option B, that is The Witch of Exmoor, is the correct answer. The Witch of Exmoor is a 1997 novel by Margaret Drabble. It is a social novel. The title describes the satirical protagonist Frida Palmer, who provides the source of much of the social commentary. Question number 21. Which of the following book by B. S. Nagpal is substituted, sorry, subtitled The Caribbean Revised? In a free state, option B, a bend in the river, option C, the river, sorry, the middle passage, and option D, the area of darkness. Here, option C, that is middle passage, is the correct answer. Let's see the highlighters. The middle passage, the middle passage was the stage of the triangular trade in which millions of Africans were forcibly transported to the New World as part of the Atlantic slave trade. Question number 22. The tragedy of Ferex and Porex is the other title of Garbo Duck. Option B, Ralph Royster Doister. Option C, Damon and Pythias. Option D, Lamentable Tragedy. Here, option A, that is Garbo Duck, is the correct one. Let's move towards here option A that is Garbo Duck is the correct one. Let's see the highlighters. The tragedy of Garbo Duck also titled Ferex and Porex. It is an English play from 1561. It was performed at the Christmas celebration given by the Inner Temple in 1561 and performed at Whitehall before Queen Elizabeth I on 18th January 1561 by the gentlemen of the Inner Temple. Question number 23. Who of the following poets is Australian? Option A. Austin Clark. Option B, Judith Ritt, uh, Ritt. Option C, Edwin Moore. Option D, Derek Walcott. Here, option B, that is Judith Wright, is the correct one. Question number 23. Who of the following poet, poets is Australian? Option A, Austin Clark. Option B, Judith Street, Option C, Edwin Moore. Option D, Derek Walcott. Option B, that is Judith Wright. 
is the correct option. Let's see the highlighters. Jurich Reed, an Australian poet, environmentalist and campaigner for Aboriginal land rights. She was a recipient of Christopher Brennan Award. She was a recipient of the Australian National Living Treasure Award in 1998. She was born on 31st May 1915 in Almidale, New South Wales, Australia. She, uh, she died on 25th June 2000 at the age of 35 at Canberra, Australia, Australian Capital Territory, Australia. Her spouse is Jack McKinney and children uh, child is Meredith McKinney. Awards Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry in 1991, Australian National Living Treasure Award in 1998, she had received. Question number 24 James Joyce Exiles is a short story, poem, play, and novel. Here, option C, that is play, is the correct answer. James Joyce Exiles is a play. Okay. Exiles is James Joyce's only extant play and draws on the story of the dead. The final story, short story, is James' story collection, Dubliners. The play was rejected by W.B. Yeats for production by the Abbey Theatre. Its first major London performance was in 1970 when Harold Pinter directed it at the Mermaid Theatre. Publisher was Jonathan Cape and Joyce himself described the structure of the play as three cat and mouse acts. Question number 25. From the following list, from the following list, choose the work which is not written by E. M. Foster. Where Angels Fear to Tread, Option B, Morris, Option C, A Room of One's Own, Option D, The Longest Journey. Here, Option C, that is A Room of One's Own, is the correct option. Let's see the highlighters now. A Room of One's Own is an extended essay by Virginia Woolf, first published in September 1929. The work based on two lectures Wolf delivered, delivered in October 1928 at Newnham College and Girton College, Women's Constituent College at the University of Cambridge. An important feminist text, the essay is noted in its argument for both a literal and figurative space for women, women's writers within a literary tradition dominated by men. Friends, by this we have completed day 9's question and answers and uh, there is a good news that you all can get all these notes in PDF form as well and you all can join our WhatsApp course, WhatsApp group as well for completing your course. So, I wish you all the best for your upcoming examination. Till then, if you require, apart from the material that we are providing to you all, feel free to drop a message in my WhatsApp number. Number is given in the video. Thank you so much. Friends, today we are going to discuss the question answers from day 10. And uh, here we are including all the important questions from past year question paper. So be alert, attentive and uh, before I utter the answer, please try to answer by yourselves in order to get the scores and if possible, drop your scores in the comment section. Let's begin. Question number one. Here is a list of partition novels which have violence on the woman's body as a significant theme. Pick the odd one out. Option A, The Pakistani Bride. Option B, What the Body Remembers. 
ऑप्शन सी ट्रेन टू पाकिस्तान ऑप्शन डी द आईसी कैंडी मैन द आइस कैंडी मैन हियर ऑप्शन ए द पाकिस्तानी ब्राइड इज द ऑड वन एंड देयर फोर दिस इज योर आंसर लेट्स सी द हाइलाइटर्स द पाकिस्तानी ब्राइड इज वन ऑफ द मॉडर्न नोवेल्स रिटन बाय बापसी सिद्धुआ द नोवेल डिस्क्राइब्स द ट्रैजिक प्लाइट और कंडीशन दिस मींस कंडीशन ओके प्लाइट ऑफ वुमेन स्ट्रगल टू सर्वाइव इन अ ब्रूटल इगोइस्टिक मेल सोसाइटी द पाकिस्तानी ब्राइड इज अ स्टोरी ऑफ अ गर्ल नेम्ड जैतून हु lost her parents in a very early age during partition and was adopted by a tribesman qasim question number 2 which of the following characters is killed in akpes things fall apart in conformity with an african tribal custom option a okonwo option b O B Rika, option C E K Mefuna, option D Envoy. Here option C that is E K Menufuna, E K Mefuna is the correct option. Let's see the highlighters. Things fall apart is the debut novel by Nigerian author Chinua Abe, first published in nineteen fifty eight. It's a story chronicles pre-colonial life in the southeastern part of Nigeria and the arrival of Europeans during the late nineteenth century. Archetypal modern African novel in English. Ike Mefuna is a boy from the Mabino tribe. Question number three: We will do it. I tell you, we will do it. The repetition of a phrase is option A, antiphrasis; option B, diacope; option C, aposiopsis; option D, enumeratio. Here, option B is the correct answer. That is diacope. Question num uh, question highlight sorry answer highlighters let's uh, see it. Diacope is a rhetorical term meaning repetition of a word or phrase with one or two intervening words. It derives from a Greek word meaning cut in two. Question number four. Conrad's Heart of Darkness presents two conflicting discourses present in his own culture. Identify the two discourses from the following: Option A, Modernism and Anti-Colonialism; Colonialism. Option B, Modernism and Structuralism; Option C, Anti-Colonialism and Eurocentricism; Option D, Material Culturalism and Tribalism. Here, Option C, that is Anti-Colonialism and Eurocentricism is the correct answer. Anti-colonialism in the twentieth and twenty-first century refers to two interconnected concepts: a historical event and a critical analytic. As a historical event, anti-colonialism means the struggle against imperial rule in colonized countries. mostly during the first half of the 20th century eurocentricism is generally defined as a cultural phenomenon that views the histories and cultures of non western societies from a european and western perspective question number 5 christopher marlowe wrote all the following plays except your options are option a tamburlaine the great the jew of malta richard 3 edward 2 here option c that is reward sorry richard 3 is the correct option 
Richard III Chronicle play in five acts by William Shakespeare, written about 1992 to 1994 and published in 1997, is a quarto edition seemingly reconstructed from memory by the acting company. A copy of the play was missing. Question number six. J. M. Quadzi was the first writer to be awarded the Booker Prize twice. He won the prize for option A, Life and Times of Michael K. and Disgrace, option B, Dusk Lands and Disgrace, option C, Four and Elizabeth Costello, and option D, Age of Iron and Disgrace. Here, option A, that is, Life and Times of Michael K. and Disgrace is the correct option. Life and Times of Michael K. is a 1983 novel by South African-born writer J. M. Kodzri. The novel won Booker Prize for 1983. Disgrace published in 1st July 1999. In it won Booker Prize. The writer also awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature four years after its publication. Question number seven. Who among the following women writers has written novel on yellow paper? Option A. Elizabeth Smitho. Option B. Stevie Smith. Option C. Zulu Sofola, option D, Gita Mehta. Here, answer is option B, Stevie Smith. The full name of Smith is Florence Margaret Smith. She was an English poet and novelist. She was awarded the Cholmon Dele Award for Poets and won the Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry, a play TV by Hug Whitemore, based on her life, was adapted into a film starring Glenda Jackson. Question number eight. Which Bible is the earliest English version printed with verse divisions? Option A. Tyndale's translation, option B, the Geneva Bible, option C, the Joy Reims version, option D, King James version. Here, your option goes with the Geneva Bible. Okay, this is your correct answer. Let's move to the highlighters. The Geneva Bible is one of the most historically significant translations of the Bible into English preceding the King James Version by 51 years. It was the primary novel, sorry, primary Bible of 16th century English post-Protestantism. Uh, the Geneva Bible followed the Great Bible of 1539, the first authorized Bible of the Church of England. Question number 9. T.S. Eliot used a line, Mr. Kutz, he did, as an epitaph to the hollow man from where it has been taken. Question, oh, sorry, option A, the heart of darkness. Option B, Duchess of Malfi. Option C, death of a salesman. Option D, none of these. Here, your option A is correct, that is the heart of darkness. In Heart of Darkness, we find Mr. Kutz. The Heart of Darkness that was published in 1899 is a novel by Polish-English novelist Joseph Conrad about a narrated voyage up the Congo River into the Congo Free State in the heart of Africa. Here, Charles Marlowe, the narrator, tells the story to friends 
aboard a boat anchored on the river Thames. Question number 10. Galsworthy's first novel is Silk Box, but before that he wrote Dash, which he never published. And that is, that book is Fraternity, Jocelyn, Strife, Loyalties. And your option goes with Jocelyn. Galsworthy's first novel, first novel is Jocelyn, but this was not published. Galsworthy's first novel was published in a small edition in 1898 under a pseudonym. It was never reprinted. Question number 11. Gogo and Didi are the characters developed by Option A. Samuel Beckett Option B. Samuel Butler Option C. J. M. Sims and Option D. Somerset Magum Here, Option A, that is Samuel Beckett is the correct answer. Samuel Beckett was an Irish novelist, playwright, short story writer, theatre director, poet and literary translator. He was born on 13th April 1906 at Fox Rock, Rock Island. He died on 22nd December 1989 in Paris, France. Waiting for Godot that was published in 1952 is a play by him in which two characters, Vladimir, that is Didi, and Estragon, that is Gogo, Gogo, engage in a variety of discussions and encounters while waiting for Godot, who never arrives. Question number 12. Which novel of Foster deals with homosexual theme and published after his death? Option A, A Passage to India. Option B, Morris. And op uh, option C, the Hill of Devi, and option D, that is Celestial. Here, Celestial, Omnibus. Here, option B, that is Morris, is correct, and not the rest. Okay. Morris is a novel by E. M. Foster, a tale of homosexual love in early twentieth-century England. It follows Morris Hall from his school days through university and beyond. It was written in 1913 to 1914 and revised in 1932 and 1959 to 50, 1960. Question number 13. Which work of Foster is based on Arabian adventure? Option A. Morris. Option B. Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Option C. A Passage to India. And option D, none of the above. So here, let's see. Here your option is option B, that is seven, year, seven pillars of wisdom is the correct answer. And let's see the highlighters. Highlighter says seven pillars of wisdom is the autobiographical account of the experiences of British soldier T. E. Lawrence or Lawrence of Arabia while serving as a liaison officer with, Leb uh, with the rebel forces during the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Turks in 1916-1918. to First published in December 1926, completed in February 1922. Question number 14. Which novel of Virginia Woolf is unfinished? Option A. Mrs. Dolloway, option B, to the lighthouse, option C, the waves, option D, between the acts. Here, option D, last option, that is between the acts is the correct one. Between the acts is the final novel by Virginia Woolf. It was published, published shortly after her death in 1941. At the time of her death, Wolf had yet to correct the type script of the novel and a number of critics consider it to be an unfinished novel. Question number 15. 
poetry is the spontaneous overflow of emotion that takes its origin from option a feelings recollected in tranquility option b emotion recollected in tranquility option c images of man and nature and option d sensibility with more enthusiasm here emotion recollected in tranquility is the correct one poetry is the spontaneous overflow of emotions that takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility it is said by william wordsworth question number 16 who among the following stated poetry is the image of man and nature option a s t coleridge option b william blake option c william wordsworth option d john keats here option c that is william wordsworth is the correct answer let's see the highlighters some of the famous quotes are poetry is the image of man and nature poetry is the breath and finer spirit of all knowledge it is the impassioned sorry impassioned expression which is the countenance of all signs next quote is poetry is first and last of all knowledge it is immortal as the heart of men man 17 who among the following author was not written john of arc has not written john of arc option a j b shaw option b saude option c mark twain option d coleridge here let's see the highlighters john of arc an epic poem was written in 1796 an epic poem by saude coleridge also helped him write this poetry of 19 1798 edition but later it was deleted john of arc is also written by j b shaw and mark twain it divided into two halves first describing john's quest to meet charles the dauphin of france and finally he got the dauphin support and begins to lead the french military the second half describes the french defeat of the uh, british army at orleans it ends with charles crown as king of france question number 18 with s t coleridge saude wrote which of the following poem option a curse of kohima option b the fall of rabispire option c the story of three bears option d goldilocks here option b is the correct answer the fall of robespierre is the correct answer let's see the highlighters the story of three bears was his most enduring contribution to literary history it is the children's classic the original goldilocks story first published in his prose collection the doctor with s t coleridge he wrote the fall of robespierre robespierre in which he wrote his first collection of poems in 1794 saude's notable fairy tale is goldilocks and the three bears saude and coleridge were involved in early experiments with nitrous oxide gaseous gas laughing gas sorry conducted by the uh, scientist humphrey davy from 189 saude contributed the quarterly to the quarterly 
he wrote all i learnt was a little swimming and a little beating when he was in university william hazlitt was most savage critic of saudi he replied his critic in a radical play what teller he is famous for writing children's nursery rhymes for example what are little boys made of what are little boys made of snips and snails and puppy dog tails next question is question number 19 the liberal is a political journal published in 1822 by option a byron lay hunt and shelley byron lay hunt and blake byron lodge and shelley byron keats and shelley here option a that is byron lay hunt and shelley is the correct answer the liberals a political journal published in 1822 by byron lay hunt and shelley when they traveled to italy next question is question number 20 Child Harold Pilgrimage is an autobiographical epic poem showing influence of option A Sydney option B Spencer option C Wordsworth option D Coleridge and here option B is the correct one that is Spencer Child Harold Pilgrimage it is it is a canto and and by autobiographical epic poem showing influence of spencer he wrote his first canto in london he wrote other cantos of child harold and don john in italy he traveled to greece in 1823 to participate in greek nationalism nationalism to fight against the turks Question number twenty-one: Who among the following claimed the poets are the unacknowledged le legislature of the world? Here, option A is Dryden, option B Pope, option C Spencer, option D Shelley. Here, option D is the correct one. That is Shelley. An apology for poetry. It is written by Shelley. Shelley written this work in nineteen twenty-one. It was most famous work. The work contains Shelley's famous claim that poets are the unacknowledged legislature of the world. In it, he stated, "Nature never set forth the earth in as rich as tapestry as diverse poets have done." For Shelley, poets are not only authors of language and music, of the dance and architecture and statuary and painting they the institutors of laws and the founders of civil society question number 22 the poem hyperion the main theme of the poem is option a the war between timur the war between titans the war between turks the war between roses and here in hyperion we find wars between titans question number b hyperion kids incomplete epic poem is in verse because it was criticized of being miltonic the story relates to the despair of the titans and after their fall to the olympians <coughs> The main theme of the poet, sorry, poem is the war between Titans and the later Olympians. The Hyperion, the old sun god, is dethroned by Apollo. The number twenty-three. Table talk, a collection of essays, originally published in two volumes. The essay deals with option A, art, literature, and philosophy. Roman art literature and philosophy 
Latin art, literature and philosophy and the last option is Greek art, literature and philosophy. So here option A is the correct one that is art, literature and philosophy. Table Talk Hazlitt's collection of essays. It was originally published in two volumes. First appeared in 1821. The essay deals with art, literature and philosophy, other related topics. Question number 24. Which among the following statement is not correct but about Le Hunt? Option A. In 1810 and 11, he edited a quarterly magazine, The Reflector. Option B. In 1808, he became editor of a newspaper, The Examiner. Option C. He wrote for London Journal and edited monthly repository. Option D. He contributed 40 essays in regular column, The Round Table. Here, option D. That is, the con he contributed 40 essays in regular column, The Round Table is the correct one. Uh, highlighters, let's see. Highlighters, the essays written between 1814 and 1817 in the examiner under the series titled The Round Table was, pub was published in 1817 and 12 essays were by Hunt, 40 essays were by Hazlitt. In 1810 and 1811, he edited a quarterly magazine, The Reflector. In it, he wrote The Feast of the Poets. Uh, from from which contemporary poets were offended. In 1819 sorry, 1819 to 1821, Hunt edited The Indicator, a weekly magazine published by Joseph Appleyard. His collection of poems in, uh, entitled Foliage appeared in 1818. In 1828, he published Lord Byron and some of his contemporaries. In 1808, he became editor of a newspaper founded by his brother, John Hunt. The examiner also wrote for London Journal and edited monthly repository. Let's move towards the, let's move towards last question. That is question number 25. Which of the following work D. Quincy called psychological fantasy as impassionate prose. Sorry, impassioned prose. Here, options are the confession of an English opium uh, eater. Option B. English male coach. Option C. Suspiria D. Profundis. Option D, the glory of motion. Here, let's see the highlighters because the answer is option C. Suspiri, Suspiria de Profundis, which was published in 1845, is D. Quincy's collection of short essays in psychological fantasy. This was published in fragmentary form in 1845 in Blackwood's magazine. It is an incomplete work. The title is a Latin phrase which means science from the depth. Sorry, science from the depth. D. Quincy called psychological fantasy as impassioned prose but not termed as prose poetry. Friends, by this we have completed two days that is 9 and 10 MCQs. We will meet in our next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. And all the best for your examinations. And if you want PDF notes and uh, if you wish to join our WhatsApp group, do message us. We will help you out with that as well. Thank you everyone. All the best for your examination.